In the summertime, we're concerned with keeping cool and the threat of bushfire. But you know, it's not very long before the cooler weather settles in and we start thinking about winter time. Now in this part of Victoria, we get quite cold winters and many of our homes are designed in such a way that it makes them quite hard to heat. So what happens? We use a lot of winter fuel to try and heat our homes and often they're still not very comfortable to live in. There's some things that we can do in order to make our homes easier to heat and more comfortable to be in. So I'm going to share with you now five things that you can do to your home to do exactly that. So the first thing we can do is invisible pelmets. This is a way to make your existing window coverings more effective. So I've seen lots of homes in this part of Victoria and many of them have very good heavy line drapes. That's fantastic. But you know what? Not many of them have pelmets. Now why is that important? Well if you think about it, here are your heavy line drapes and here's the glass of your windows. Okay? In the winter time we're heating inside, it's cold outside, and the warm air finds its way down between the drapes and the glass. As it does that, the air gets cooled by the cold glass, it becomes heavier and drops. It comes out at the bottom as a cold draft, and as it does that it draws more warm air in at the top. So you can see that this is a natural cooling cycle and really not what we want in the winter time. Box pelmets are a great idea for stopping that cycle. The trouble with box pelmets is that most people really don't like the look of them and refuse to think about having box pelmets. The answer is invisible pelmets. What is an invisible pelmet? An invisible pelmet is a piece of material like this that sits over the architrave and the curtain track in order to stop that airflow between the drapes and the glass. So here's a piece of material. You might think that it's perspex. It's like perspex. It's a plastic panel. Um, it needs to be cut to the right width and the right length for your track. Um, but then it just sits on the track and the architrave and because you're looking at the edge of it, that's why we call them invisible pelmets. Because really, unless you're absolutely looking for it, you're not going to see it. And particularly when the drapes are closed, the edge of the drapes normally just poke up behind, uh, above the invisible pelmet, and you won't see it at all. So that's quite an effective way to stop that airflow uh, behind your drapes. Now you can make these out of lots of different things, uh, that's like Perspex like panel. Um, here's another material, so this is core flute, which is like corrugated cardboard, it's a plastic cardboard material that's used for signage. So that's very easy to use, uh, the in invisible pelmets are not very expensive. Um, depending on your home and your budget, you can even use just a piece of corrugated cardboard. Or maybe you've done some roofing during the summertime, you've re-roofed the pergola or the back veranda and you've got a little bit of uh, polycarbonate left. That's also quite a good material to use for that. Really it's just up to you and your imagination. So it's something that doesn't cost very much, you can do it yourself and you know what, you're going to more than double the performance of your existing drapes. The second thing you can do is zoning. Zoning is a way to effectively make your home smaller for the purposes of heating. Lots of our homes in this part of the country are quite large and we've got bathrooms and separate toilets and laundries, all areas that usually we don't really need to heat in the winter time. But the problem is that these are highly ventilated areas. So if you think about a bathroom for example, very often there's the old window with the little fly screen vent in the top, okay, that's always open, even in the winter time, okay. Also in bathrooms you might have uh, a three-in-one heat lamp exhaust unit in the ceiling and they're almost always straight through uh, into the roof, okay. So that's a very highly ventilated room. Likewise, if you've got a separate toilet, it's good to have the window open for ventilation. 
But you know what? We don't want to be heating those rooms like that because it's expensive to heat and that's all just going to flow out through the exhaust fan, through that window vent, etc. So the thing to do is to draft proof the internal doors for those rooms and keep them closed. So we're talking about having a perimeter seal for the doors and of course something along the bottom which is usually a brush seal for internal doors. The other thing is about zoning parts of the home that are not used any longer. So if you're my age, you've got kids that might have moved out of home already and um, you've got these bedrooms which are no longer used. So keeping those doors closed so we're not heating that space is also beneficial. In many homes you're going to save about a third of the space or maybe more, okay? So you're reducing your home down to two thirds, its original heating footprint. So that makes your heating more effective because you're keeping it in a smaller space. So really you're going to save a lot of your, win of your winter heating energy by zoning in that way. So have a go at that. The third thing you can do for your home, if you have a wood fire or a simple fluid gas heater, is to provide an air supply for those. What do I mean by that? Well, you've probably been operating a wood fire for years. Yeah? Well, a wood fire uses air in order to burn the wood and then the exhaust gases from that go up the flue. But that air has to come from somewhere. And typically what happens is it comes from anywhere that your home leaks air. So maybe the bathroom, maybe somewhere in the kitchen, maybe um, air vents down in the bedroom at the other end of the home. Wherever there's a leak, that's where the air comes from for your wood fire. So that's okay, your wood fire still works. But the problem is that you're actually drawing cold air from these places through your home in order for the wood fire to work. The same is true of a gas fire where it's only got a simple flue. So the answer to this is to actually provide an air supply as close as you can to the actual source of the fire. What that means typically is if you've got a wood fire on a hearth and you're on a timber floor, a simple heating duct type of um, system just fitted to the floor next to the hearth, as close as you can to the fire. So a floor outlet from a heating system is ideal for this because it's closable, okay? So you close it when you're not having the fire, but when the fire is on, you open that and that means that it's very easy for the air to come up from the subfloor and across into the firebox where it's burnt and the gas uh, exhaust goes up the flue. Okay, so that prevents cold air being drawn from other places in your home. It makes it more comfortable. The same is true for the gas fire. One word of caution though, if you've got um, a, a gas space heater that has a power flue, like a Rinai gas space heater, they're typically fitted to external walls, you don't need this because they draw their air supply from outside. Okay, but any kind of wood fire, or gas heater that's just got a simple flue like your wood heater, then an air supply as close as you can to the actual unit is ideal. The fourth thing you might be able to do for your home to make it more comfortable and energy efficient for the winter time is to think about the electric panel heaters, if you have these or if you're thinking of getting them. So the thing with any kind of electric heater is it's 100% efficient. Now you might think that that's really good. The fact is, whatever electrical energy you put in, you get heat energy out, okay? So it doesn't matter if the manufacturer says to you that this is an amazingly efficient electric panel heater. What they're really talking about is the fact that it's got a thermostat in it. And so you can set the thermostat and when the room gets to that temperature, that heater will shut off the electric element and you won't use any more electricity. What happens in reality is that these panel heaters are normally fitted to an external wall of an uninsulated house. That is, the wall is uninsulated and you've got the panel heater fitted right up against that uninsulated wall. What happens typically is that the heater never thermostats off. 
A lot of that heat is just transferred, radiated through that external wall. It's lost. It's going outside. Okay, the rest of the heat comes into the room, but there's so much heat loss in that room through the glass, through a poorly insulated ceiling, um, through air movement, that effectively the panel heater never thermostats off. And so often I find householders that have fitted these heaters and then got an amazingly high uh, electric bill. And they're wondering why, because they were meant to be so efficient. So the answer is, well, they can be reasonably efficient if you fit them to a well insulated room, okay? If you can't do that and you still want the electric panel heater, the thing to do is to fit it to an internal wall. At least then the heat that's radiated through the wall is still within your home, okay? So that's better than losing it straight out um, the external wall. The other thing to do is to think about maybe having a reverse cycle air conditioner. If you've got a lot of these, really a reverse cycle air conditioner is a better way to heat. In fact, these can be more than 500% efficient. Now compare that with 100% of electric heaters, okay? So it's still electric heating, but 500% efficient. How can that be? It comes about because air conditioners simply move heat from one to the other. That's why they're called heat pumps. They pump heat from one place to the other, and that's why they can be very efficient. So if you've got panel heaters, think about moving them to internal walls rather than external walls, and definitely not under glass. And if you haven't, if you're thinking about electric heating, really a reverse cycle air conditioner, and particularly a very small, high efficiency one, is much better. The fifth thing that we can do is to think about the thermal efficiency of our homes. That is the building itself. What is thermal efficiency? It's just a measure of how well your home holds the winter heating in and in the summertime how well it keeps the summer heat out. Okay, So if you think about your home um, in that respect, in the winter time we're heating the air inside and if your home is drafty a lot of that air is going to be lost. How much air is going to be lost? Well, it depends on how drafty it is and the weather conditions at the time. The windier it is, of course, the more air flow through your home and the more heat loss you're going to have simply by losing the warm air. Now, most of us know that we've got some ceiling insulation, but is it adequate? We know in the winter time, our warmest air is up against the ceiling and that maximises the heat flow through the insulation. So it's very important to have adequate ceiling insulation to reduce that heat loss through the ceilings. Walls. Lots of our homes have been built without wall insulation and that means that there's a lot of heat loss through uninsulated walls. Think about your home. What's the wall area of your home? I think you'll find most homes have quite a lot of wall area and so that's a source of lots of heat loss yep, in the winter time. The glazing also, glass is very good conductor of heat so normally there's a lot of heat loss through glass. So double glazing or secondary glazing which is double glazing for existing windows is going to greatly reduce that. If you're on a timber floor that's another source of heat loss okay so heat is being lost through your timber floor Adding insulation under the floor reduces that heat loss and importantly also makes the floor much more comfortable to stand on because it's not so cold. Improving these elements is going to make your home much more comfortable to live in and surprisingly perhaps you'll be using a lot less energy to heat it. Let's recap on what we've learned. Ways to make our home more comfortable in the winter time. Number one, invisible pelmets. Two, zoning. Three, an air supply for the fire. Four, making our electric heating more effective. And five, improving the thermal efficiency of the home. Now at EcoMaster, we're the experts in thermal efficiency. So if you'd like to learn more, visit our website. You'll find lots more information there. Doing these simple things makes your home more comfortable to live in. It makes it cheaper to run and that'll be better for the environment too.